Hi guys, I uh, thought I should do another green to glass with you, for you, but this time we will do it with a little twist. Everyone is brewing the New England IPA, so I felt compelled to do the same. Let's have a look at uh, the recipe. I choose to not to do a very strong one, because I wanted uh, some more sessionable for the summer. So I uh, was aiming for something maybe just below 5%. And this is a 23 liter batch. I used 2.5 kilograms of uh, pale ale malt. And that's a blend with 50-50 with pale ale and Maris Otter. I used 400 grams of uh, flaked barley, 400 grams of Munich malt, 400 grams of flaked oats, uh, 400 grams of wheat malt, 400 grams of uh, torrified wheat, and 150 grams of Melodium malt. So right there you see it's not your typical New England IPA. I didn't add any hops until the flame out. And then I added uh, 50 grams of Amarillo, 50 grams of Centennial, 50 grams of Chinook, 50 grams of Simcoe. 200 grams hops at uh, flame out. And uh, I did a two stage dry hop on day three. I dry hopped with uh, 50 grams of Simcoe, 50 grams of Citra, 50 grams of Mosaic. So 150 grams there. And the second dry hop on day 7, I uh, added uh, 103 grams of Simcoe, uh, 51 grams of Amarillo, and 51 grams of Centennial, and 100 grams of Citra. So that's another 305 grams of hops. So there were a lot of hops in this beer, and there were a lot of uh, different uh, fermentables. And there was so much protein in this wort, so my bazooka filter clogged up entirely. I have to scrape it with an, a knife when I clean it up. So I actually couldn't transfer this beer from uh, the tap. I had to lift up the kettle and pour it into the fermenters through a sieve. I don't think I have footage of that. Uh, but I do have uh, some footage from the brew day. Um, so we'll have a look at the brew day and then we'll come back and try the beer. One last thing, important thing. I uh, fermented this with the London Ale yeast, the White Labs WLP 013. Don't forget the yeast. That's what it's all about. Have a look at the brew footage and then we'll come back and uh, have a sample of the beer. So the grains are in, or the grains, everything is in, and now we stir this up so we don't have any dough balls and start the circulation and control the temp and the pH. Okay, Let's check the pH. We're a bit high, so we're gonna lower that with some uh, lactic acid. Kuken. There you have for filming. Okay. Let's add this. Acid. Okay, let's see if that helped anything with the pH. Yeah, that dropped us down to about 5.3 maybe. So that's awesome. Been going for uh, 45 minutes. Gonna take up the temp now to about 71 see but I'm gonna do this really really slowly just try to use 500 watts and see if that will raise the temperature slowly might be a little too little wattage I mashed out I will raise up 
the grain bin and uh, start our sparge. Like making sausage. And I've set the heat for uh, 98 degrees Celsius. So while we're sparching, we will heat up the wort but don't get any boilovers. We're almost at the end of sparching. Watch up to 28 liters. Stop myself from skimming the top when uh, it looks like this. I know I don't have to. Check the pre boil gravity. It's 10.40. So we're up to boil. We're gonna start the timer for 60 minutes. About 20 minutes left, so I added the cooler and the hop filter. Gonna add some yeast nutrient. Won't be adding any findings to this because it's a, supposed to be a hazy beer. So here's the Two liter starter, uh, VLP 013. I'm gonna pour myself a glass of this, and the rest I'm gonna decant. It's leaving a small layer of beer on top of the yeast uh, to swirl up the yeast cake with before pitching. So here's the glass, and here's the decanted starter. It smells okay. And it tastes fine too. And um, this is at room temperature, 21, 22 C, something like that. <sighs> so that's okay. Cheers. Today I'm gonna try to use uh, my circulation pump to do uh, some uh, whirlpooling of the hops to see how that works. No whirlpooling in that means that we will uh, rotate the wort, but whirlpooling in that sense that we will circulate the hops through the hop spider. That's the idea. Have about a minute left of the boil. Just sanitizing a uh, spoon and the, the lid with the steam from the boil off. Um, so gonna add some hops at the end. This is the first hop addition. We will be adding 50 grams of Simcoe, 50 grams of Chinook, 50 grams of Centennial and 50 grams of Amarillo. And then we will try this circulation method. See how that works. Um, gonna be steeping those hot for about 50 minutes then I'm gonna cool the temperature down and uh, to about 72 C and uh, continue to steep them while recirculating if that works that's the end of the boil Turning this off, turning it on again so we can so we can see the temperature. Now every alarm in the house are going off at the same time. So in goes 50 grams of Simco and 50 grams of Chinook and 50 grams of Centennial. Starting to smell good. And 50 grams of Amarillo.
I just gave it a stir, but it floats up again. Uh, so I might even have to give it a stir now and then. Or maybe I just leave it. So this will steep hot for 15 minutes and we'll drop the temperature down. It's are up. So let's hook up the cooling. I should have hooked it up already. But let's cool this puppy down. Uh, it took a little while longer. Um, so maybe it steeped more like 20 minutes hot. And now we're lowering the temperature. We'll set the temperature to 72 C and hold it there for about maybe 45 minutes to an hour, something like that. There's no hurry. We're down to temp, so I stopped the cooling. I have to stop the pump for a bit, to give it give it a stir. This method doesn't work as good as I could hope for. I decided to go for a more uh, ordinary whirlpool method instead. Um, hooked it up. So I'm playing around a bit. We're still holding this at uh, pasteurizing temperature. Okay, let's see what we got for numbers. This one. 1046. That's gonna be a quite sessionable summer ale. That's good. Time's up. Can I evaluate the whirlpool with this pump? The experiment I did, it sucked. And uh, here's <laughs> where we start the cooling down process. It's very high tech. Got stuck. Put the wash in. So we're in the fermentation fridge. I'm gonna start this at uh, 18 degrees. And we're a little bit hotter, so we're cooling it down now. Let's open it up. We are still on Krausen, so it is as it should be for this beer. Let's add dry hop. In goes 50 grams of Simco, 50 grams of uh, Citra, and 50 grams of Mosaic. Not 
should we give that a stir maybe uh, prepared for this just might in case we're so gentle bringing them down from the Krausen ain't gonna touch it more than that okay let's put it back even though that beer is still fermenting I'm still gonna flush that headspace with uh, some CO2 the beer is back in the airlock is going crazy and um, now I'm gonna start raising the temp of this brew dry opening the second time in goes 100 grams of citra 100 grams of cinco, 50 grams of uh, amarillo and 50 grams of centennial and uh, we have a lot of hop debris floating in here so I will add this and give it a stir I will do that off camera uh, and then I will Perch the vessel from oxygen with some CO2. Okay, here you have it. Uh, it's hazy as uh, fuck, and uh, it's it's orange. Uh, I know Naples is uh, supposed to be yellow. I added uh, some Munich and uh, some Melodium malt and that pushes it to the orange color. And to be honest, the reason why I did add Munich is uh, because uh, I do enjoy the malt and uh, I have a, a big bag of it, so I have to use some every time I brew. <laughs> Um, so you see uh, it has a really nice level of carbonation as you see it pushes up uh, a new head it has a, a white head uh, and you have no chance to see through this uh, it's very very hoppy this has been sitting in the keg for two weeks and it's extremely hoppy um, it has mellowed down a bit at start it was like putting your nose in hop bag okay let's dive in Uh, it's ex extremely hoppy. Um, the hop juice um, really fits this beer. Uh, we have some bitterness there. Um, I intentionally brought the bitterness a little bit out of style, as the color is a little bit out of style, and that was my intention as well. I added the hops um, when the wort was still hot and gave it a rest before I cooled it down. So it's a little bit more bitterness than to style, I would say. And of course, the color is a little bit too orange. It's still have a taste of raw hops uh, which has improved but I think it uh, will improve even more in the keg you're supposed to drink uh, IPAs uh, fresh but uh, this has actually imp improved with uh, some aging and I hope it will improve even more I 
I used quite a lot of hops in this. So how could we improve on this? Well, if you don't like the orange color, don't use Munich and Melanoidium malt. That's for sure. You can try uh, the wheat malt and the oats and the flaked barley and the torrified wheat. But for color, uh, ditch the Munich and the, the Melanoidium malt if you don't uh, want the orange color. Otherwise than this, maybe you can use a little bit less hops than I did. I use quite a lot for dry hopping. And uh, of course, if you really want the beer to style, uh, shield the wort down before uh, you do the massive uh, hop stand. But I actually wanted mine with a little bit of bite, so I try to brew what I like. So let's get on with the twist and the experiment. I filled up the keg and I had some left. So I put some in a bottle and uh, dropped one of those carbonation drops in. Of course, I purged the bottle with CO2 before filling it up. I wrapped it with this aluminum foil to secure it from uh, the light because it's a uh, see-through bottle. What I really would have wanted right now is this from the keg and another bottle which I had a bottle from the keg and this one. Because I have seen some nasty napas out there and I had, had one sent to me uh, which was brown from oxidizing. So uh, uh, see my phone. News from Rusty Homebro. Beanham Homebro Sauce Single Hop Ale. I have to check that when the video is uh, done. If you haven't uh, checked out Rusty the Gusher, please do so. I can put the link to him below. Let's get on with uh, this video. So, here's the one from the keg. And here's the bottle fermented one. Uh, this is the only one, so I have no idea how this will turn out. It doesn't look brown. That's a good thing. There's something... There's yeast in there floating i think yeah let's crack it and see if we have a gusher or what we have the bottle is quite firm just a little hiss there maybe i should have left it a little bit longer let's see Seems to be carbonated. It's carbonated, all right. See, color, color wise, I think they are. This one looks a little bit darker on camera, but let me, let's try another experiment. <coughs> Lights. When we shine through it, they both have the same color. So. I guess the amount of uh, beer in the glass affects it. Okay. So, nothing different there. Let's give this one a nose.
They smell different though. There's another twist to it. This is a little bit cleaner. Not that it's bad. It's just another scent which is not present in this one. This is the one from the keg and this is the one from the bottle. So the keg one. Uh, let's compare them, okay? There's an extra flavor in this one, the same I got on the nose. And it's not uh, cranberry, <laughs> I show you. It's still very hoppy though. You have to realize that this one has been out in room temperature uh, bottle conditioning for two weeks and this has been sitting in the much colder cake. I keep my keyser around uh, 10 C. Uh, and even after doing that light test I still think this one is a tad darker. I guess I have to drink this down to the same level. I hate being double fisted. Oh, it's such a burden. The more hop you put in a beer, the more you have to concern about uh, oxygen in your beer. I made a video uh, of uh, some ways you can do it uh, where cheap get to style uh, more to get uh, people start thinking about oxygen in every step this ain't ruined by oxygen and this ain't ruined by oxygen so uh, i might be on to something i'll put a link to that video as well below Okay, now we have a, it's gonna get harder to part this, <clears throat> so I'm gonna label one of them. I actually can go by taste, but you can't. Okay, so the one with the expensive silver ring there is the one from the bottle. Okay, we're approximately the same now and as you see this one is a little bit darker. Not so much in real life as on camera. Let's do the light test again. So it's not dark, but it is darker, but I can't really see it on the light. So it's a little bit darker and uh, what makes beer darker? Yeah, oxidization, but it's very, very little. 
and not that much as you see on camera. An oxidized beer get you some off flavors. The last one I tried has has a sweet jammy scent to it, uh, cardboard uh, and so on. And it, it has another note than this this one for sure. This one is nicer. Even though this is nice tasting too. I'm just uh, rambling now, so I'm gonna call it. That was that. That was my New England IPA, and we also did an extra experiment. Hope you liked it. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out. <sighs> Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out.